We are back and it's been a very, very entertaining weekend when it comes to us Charlton Festival clues. The boys are flanking me, looking back on what was a super Saturday and Sunday of racing action. In fact, it probably went all the way back to Thursday and Friday as well. We're going to reflect on everything that happened. Uh, obviously, it was a brilliant week for us. If you watch the Punter's Guide, we had a bit of success. And Venetia Williams, we said she was back in form and she had a treble. How are we spending our winnings, boys? <laughs> just want to talk about Orkin Risk. Forget Saturday's racing. How about Friday? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was mentioned uh, as well yeah. earlier on in the week. Uh, Bumpety Bump. Yeah, it was a good weekend, wasn't it? Uh, a brilliant weekend. Bumpety Bump. Um, all, all good each way bets at 11 to 1 from 4th, which is fantastic. Uh, State Man let the big, uh, the big double down. Went to, was it 1 to 10 in running or something like that? Um, what else did we get at the weekend, which was nice? Yeah, oh, we had plenty. Place. Lucky place, yeah. Matt Matt gave a big shout to Martador. Um, oh, hang on. He wants it. <laughs> uh, I'll tell well, you that. Well. It doesn't happen very often. Um, but here we are, of course. It is the road to Cheltenham, and there was no bigger, uh, real, no bigger real race than the Gold Cup, and we had a couple of clues. We'll look at the ADOC action shortly and talk about Grey Dawning, but... The John Durkin was probably one of the, the, the strongest renewals ever, really, or certainly in recent times. William Mullins had the key with the Galloping Day shot, but of course the money was for fast or slow late on. It was the original favourite, Factor File, that came home in front. What do we make of the race as a whole? I mean, the wax and lyrical about Factor File, and now he's the new Gold Cup favourite. I'll start with you, Frankie. Were you that impressed that you think he should be favourite for the Gold Cup? Oh, I was impressed. Do you know what? I was more impressed given the drift. Um, because you think, well, it's the start of the season, it's over a shorter trip, there's no money down for him, maybe he's not bang on, and he jumped probably messier than, than most and then still won. Does that indicate that his engine is just huge? The other side of the argument, which Willie Mullins probably made, is that they went so hard up from Gallop in the Champs um, and Fast or Slow obviously taking each other on and... and Gallop into Champs to go that hard and that fast and only finish a couple of lengths behind and kind of showed a little bit of a second wind once passed was very, very impressive with eyes on the Gold Cup. So they're, they're the two sides of the story. Where do I sit? I haven't watched it back. I think I'm probably in the, the fact to file camp. I, I think the fact that it was maybe unexpected and the fact that he's the up and coming horse means that you know, the sky's the limit for him. Uh, and that's not taken away from Gallup in the Champs. I think he'll run to the exact same standard he did last year in the Gold Cup. But maybe Fact File can improve past him. Okay. I mean, I, I thought Gallup in the Champs ran a, ran, a, ran a cracking race. I think he might still be the horse to beat in, in March. I know we were big fans, or you were big fans of fast or slow going into it. But, you know, what, what did you make of the race? Um, I was a little bit confused with fast or slow because hasn't been entered for the King George and we're told that that was a mistake. Uh, so maybe supplemented, but off the back of that, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not, it's a bit of a head scratch now, isn't it really? Because do you spunk a lot of money um, supplementing fast or slow? I was all, all over fast or slow, but um, you know, it's not pocket talk here. Last year when we went to Cheltenham, there'd be 98% of racing fans going, wow, that wins a gold cup next year, which, <laughs> you know, which, which we all did. Um, top class always just does enough. Um, but I thought Frankie would still be all over Gallup and Deschamps at, you know, four to one, nine to two, something like that, because we know what happens. He was probably, well, a stone unfit, as they say, you know, stone defined. We knew what was going to happen in this. And if, if you were a layer, it was, it was the race of the year where you're pressing the lay button because you know, you know, he's not going to win this. Um, the really market, impressive. The market you told you Gallup and Deschamps was expected. This is, this is a case of putting him spot on for Christmas, isn't it? I, I wasn't yeah. disappointed with him. I thought he ran a massive race. I, I just was surprised by um, fact to file. You know, I, I think Gallup and Deschamps will run to the same standard when he when he won the Gold Cup last year. But if the money had come for fact to file and he won, I, I'd say, you know, fair enough. Maybe he was fitter and we, we know that this probably suits him more than Gallup and Deschamps, but he was a drifter as well. Yeah. But it is, um, at that point, this question, but everybody always asks it. If in a month's time it was the Cheltenham Gold Cup, where's your money go today? You've got to make your bet today. Nobody's ever going to put a gun to your head and say, you've got to put a bet down today for next month. Where where do you go if we're going next month? I, I think that's some big galloping dish. You know? He's been there, he's done it. Um, and I thought he's had more than acceptable reappearance. Look, 
He was beaten in this by by fast or slow. Then he goes obviously to Leopardstown and he does what he does, and then he picks us up in Cheltenham. I thought it was a, a perfectly respectable return. And I mean, a respect factor foul, but is he not prized upon reputation and what he's done at, at home? I mean, they say he's an absolute beast. He's gone the floor in a pearl route. He's never seen a hurdle. He's gone from a bumper straight over fences. Yes, he was faultless last year, apart from getting beat by American Mike on his return. So we've got that as well. He's been on his return last year. He still did what he did. He's won in his return this year, despite a market drift. So he is going to build on this. But I'd be, I'd be really chuffed. Well, Willie Bullins is chuffed, obviously, because he's got the lot. But I'd be really chuffed in terms of galloping Deschamps' return. And if it was in a month's time, I think I'd be citing with him, wouldn't you? I'm on the fence, to be honest. I'm on the fence. <laughs> All right. I, I, I was impressed with both. That you know, it was a really good race, wasn't it? I was, I was even impressed with Spillance Tower. Um, I don't know if Jack Kennedy would ride at the festival. I thought it was a great ride by him. He'd probably be on Jerry Colon, wouldn't he? But um yeah, I was impressed with all. But bar fast or slow. That's that's the one that I yeah. think didn't have that much um excuses. But, but we're getting the prices coming out now, and you can see with Bet Fred 12 to 1, fast or slow. If it wasn't that soft and seat last year, it would have been second. May have been close to the Galloping de Champ, but whatever. It was a really soft and seat there. Twelve to one. Is that your each way steal now, or have we have we, have we got issues? Are we just not fit? Are we overlooking or, or, or looking at stuff and going, you know, it's just it's one race, isn't it? Well, the Spillane Tower um, was supposed to be ninety percent fit. Run it, run it, cracker. Would he go Ryanair? Uh, you pick up that at least that, that first Cheltenham winner, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just thinking of you've got Chelsea. JP's got JP's got factor file. I know the way you're thinking. Corbett's cross. I am Maximus. We thought may go that way as well. So I'm guessing you go for the Ryanair. Um, that's kind of the John Durkin yeah. then. And it, I suppose it was a bit messy. I, I think it's a big overreaction of factor file. But what do you make of Grey Dawning then when it comes to the better fetch? It's another big trial. I mean, he's 16 to 1. Joel, can you throw him into the mix? Despite being beaten on Saturday, yeah, I really can, and and I think I mean Dan Skelton looked absolutely gutted afterwards, and again that that would have gone short in run. I didn't check uh, coming over the uh, the final fence, um, and Harry Skelton's got uh, a lot of pelters, and I'm all for knocking him when they do something wrong. I don't think he did anything wrong. Uh, a very very hard race. We're not going to see him for for months. Um, first text I got on Saturday morning, very early, was from a mate Russ who said Royal Pagai weather. Which was, you know, which was which was spot on. Um, no, I, th I think it was, it, it's not really a Dan Skelton sort of thing to do, but I, you know, I'd, I'd put him away and borrow a bit of Nicky Henderson's um, bubble wrap, uh, wrap him up in his cotton wool, and it, you know, sixteen to one is a fair price. Um, and I, I was, you know, I, I was impressed, but ultimately was beaten by a horse who was crown dependent, and I think. Rich Ritchie said most of it on, on ITV and he even got emotional. Now, I never know if Americans are getting emotional just because they feel like they've got to, you know, for the 100th um, grade one or whatever. But he, he suddenly went, um, you know, and being here at Haydock and then and started crying. I'm like, well, it's not that bad, mate. What's going on? You've got St. Ellen's and Warrington and Manchester and Liverpool. Um, but Grey Dorling had, had, a hard, had a hard race. Um, now, now you could do. And again, Venetia at the weekend, brilliant. And uh, Charlie Deutsch, um, just phenomenal once again. I mean, that, that was Royal Pagai's race. I know he, he's, he won it last year and he's coming back off a long injury, but that's his type of race, isn't he? He loves Hayadoc, he loves it in the mud. Grey Dawning, you won't say he's to be 100% fit for that assignment, bearing in mind it's all about the Gold Cup in March. He's going to work back from that. So he's going to build on that. It was quite attritional, it become attritional because of the weather. The way he jumped down the back straight, I thought was sensational. He was taking lengths out of the field. He's got the race one going to the last. He has the race one. Harry asks him for a big one. He puts extra stride. He clouts the fence. And Royal Pagai, we know, just comes back and he emptied. As a fitter grey dawning, the way he jumped and the way he acts around Charlie, I think 16 to 1. I, I can't believe they pushed him out on the fact of him getting beat. I think 16 to 1 is, is a really appealing each way play, Frankie. I agree. I think it was a massive performance given the ground conditions and the fact that he is up against Royal Pagai and just how the race turned out. I think I think it was a huge performance. Um, if you look at the market and, you know, let's say, let's say for this just argument's sake, Spillance Tower goes to the Ryanair, then you've got Factor File, Gallop and the Champs, Spillance Tower's not in it, fast or slow. 
I'd have him over fast or slow at this stage at 16. It's the same for Jerry Colom. And then there's a couple in behind that I'd, I'd definitely have him over. So that would get him in the top three at least. And, um, you know, it's not always that straightforward of horses always turn up and run the race and blah, blah, blah. So he's a decent price. Uh, I don't I don't have, you know, I don't have him up, up with Gallup in the Shumps, but I certainly have him in the frame. And talking to the market, I mean, we spoke seven days ago here. We're saying he's seven to four favour. And I think he's got an absolute massive chance. And obviously, then the rains came. And obviously, he probably would have wanted for a bit of fitness. And, you know, he was seven to two in the morning. I think he got a five to two. So even with two horses coming out. So went from a bigger field, then went to smaller field. And he was a bigger price than he was on the Monday, suggesting that obviously everything wasn't ended up in his favour on Saturday. So I think he was a huge run. And say so he had the race run going to the last. So I think 16 to one. I think yeah. he's in each way to play, Joel. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Hundred percent agree. And um, you know, everybody loves a grey, almost white. Um, can I ask you? Yeah, I'm out. Geez, he was proper dirty. Have a look at that. Proper dirty. Uh, <laughs> dirty Venetia ground. Dirty little grey dawning. Um, thoughts on first of all, Brave Man's game. I thought it was going to be pulled up at one point. Stayed on to what, finish third. Um, gold tweet. I mean. You were getting excited for a second, weren't you? Yeah, I think you know. Very excited for a minute, but um, the jockey went from Jamie Spencer into Luke Morris uh, <laughs> within seconds and um, drifted back. I mean, it may not just be up to that standard, but I was getting a little bit jiggy on it 20 to 1. But, um, you know, Brave Man's game, fair play. Uh, you know, it's it, I, I don't know where we go with Brave Man's game and also. Um, gold tweet. I've, I've, I've not got a clue. Have you, I don't know. You two care. Hey, gold tweet. Something. Like, you know, I drop back in trip. Maybe a, I don't know, a soft ground king George, or maybe something back at home, or something like that. Brave man's game again, King George, or something like the Denman. You know, would be his big race, and then maybe back to Aintree. Um, but he's not. You know, he's had better chances to win gold cups, hasn't he? Yeah, um, yeah. 100%. All right, so that's the Gold Cup. What about future Gold Cup horse then in Ballyboo? What do we learn from the weekend? Other than he's fit as well. One half mistake down the back, but he's never put under pressure. Uh, nothing really wanted to get close to him. But on the back of that, seven to four favourite for the Arkle. Obviously, he'll be one for the two and a half mile, and that's where he'll go if it still existed. So the removal of that race has probably played against him. Where would you go with him? Drop him into the Arkle, push him up to the Brown Advisory, Frankie. Oh, they're probably Arkle. I I know that he's obviously got form. I think up to two miles six is it at Punchtown? But you know, good over two and a half. Probably would be more obvious for a two and a half mile hurdler to go up to three miles. But Willie Mullins does have potentially Madgebra and Dancing City in the three mile novice chase division, and he probably looks to have the Arkle one, especially. Um, with the seven barrows drama if Sergino doesn't go chasing so those options kind of lean me towards the uncle just on what other horses are there and i do think he could do it i think he i think he can set a strong pace for two miles and jump well and you know it, he could do either um i'd lean towards the uncle i actually i'm not not one for a long range antipode's favorite bet but like 15 to 8 for the uncle if things pan, pan out how i think they might he's actually almost backward as an antipode's bet in my opinion Okay, Joel. Well, I put down here if the old Turner still existed, he's going to be what four to five, eight to eleven. Uh, and I do agree with Frankie. I'm not. I'm not one for you know getting the money on a on a favourite. But if you're putting Bally Burn in the Arkle, who apart from that one look mistake, impeccable jumping, very very exciting. Um, you're going to scare a lot of people off, aren't you? You know, because a bit like the Champion Early used to be one of the best races at the Channel Festival, and then Constitution Hill. Has ruined it for everybody. Not only punters, owners, trainers, and they're not bothered turning up. But um, no, Valley uh, Burn at fifteen to eight, two to one for the Arkle. Um, Brown advisory nine to two. And uh, look, we we have said that we have said that you know has got form of a you know up to two two five two six or whatever. But two miles fast, Cheltenham. I I think it's, it's, it looks such a machine. It looks such a machine. Um, Valley Burn is, a, is one of those shorties that you would look at taking now. Um, I think it's going to be a much better bet now than Constitution Hill if it was a couple of weeks ago and Constitution Hill was set before. Uh, yeah, Valley Burn, Arkle, 15 to 8, 2 to 1. Okay, okay. Uh, good. Um, uh, sorry, this um kind of backs up the, the reason to get rid of the Turners, doesn't it? Because if the Turners was there, these novice chasers would be so spread out, yeah, no, 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 100%. 100%. Um, 
just you're going to talk about the drama in a short while, Nick. So that brings me to Iberico Lord. We've just seen win at Kempton. He won on the bridle in the end. Obviously, his main mark arrival pulled up. He's 25s uh, for the Arkell. He didn't jump well enough for me on Tayson Day, but that'll need to be certainly need to be brushed up, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, there's others you'd have ahead of him. I mean, you're, you're a big fan of Iberico Lord because he won a great one, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you joke, Matt, but look look at Loda said he was in that same... All these handicap hurdlers uh, trained over here are probably our best novice chasers this year. Um, yeah, he didn't jump that well, and you've got to jump really well to go in a quick two-mile chase around Chatham Avenue. So you'd have to be jumping a lot better to win an Arkle. But uh, that was a nice performance. I, 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 um, I backed him, obviously. <laughs> the great wood form again. Well, obviously, yeah. that should have been the race for Sir Gino. So that's going to take us through to the champion hurdle, which needs discussing. And obviously, it's going to take a while. Um, let's start with the Morgiana. Stateman's uh, defeat, first defeat when he's finished in his own country, uh, behind brighter days ahead. Traded very short in running, Joel, as you alluded to at the top of the show. Did he just blew up lack of fitness, or was he beaten by the better mare? I think a little bit of both. I was, I was, I was really, really shocked. Really, really shocked. And of course, we've uh, all had the double on with uh, Pictori over the weekend because it was the most obvious one. And um, with a two obvious like that, that's the reason why. Um, no, I, I think two fantastic jockeys uh, giving everything. There was, there was no way anybody was going to lie down. And brighter days ahead, you know, fought back. She fought back, and that's what that's what I really liked. But again, I think we'll get on to the, the old mares thing here. If we're dropping the old turners, does a mares race need to exist? But then we go back to the other reasoning of, you know, I was there when Honeysuckle won. <laughs> you know, it was, you know, and then that was the race, the race for her. Um, but as far as the champion hurdle goes, I've not, I've not really looked at the market for the champion hurdle. Um, so you can probably surprise me now. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a, have a clue what state man would be. State man is. Seven to two. Wow. Lost enough. It's going to be favourite yeah. from uh, not turning up. Well, so yes. this, this, is, this is why it's messy. So we'll find out more of the fire fifth. We don't know what's happened at Constitution Hill. She missed the gates on Saturday with a stone bruise, lost her mouth. We hope we're going to see her this weekend at Hatton's Grace. But by standing in a box, she's the new nine to four favourite. Because Brian Day's ahead, he's seven to four favourite for the mayor. So that's where Gordon Elliott is pointing at and said that's where she will go. However, She's still six to one for the champion uh, itself. Stateman in there at seven to two, and Constitution Hill at nine to two. Now, let's let's just finish off on Stateman first of all. Well, I know it's a surprise, but you know, seven to two would that tempt you to bounce back? He is the reigning champion, Frankie. I told you, lost math, wouldn't win. You you did. You were right. And you got your money back. Um. Uh, if you ran that race again in March, I would have State Man to beat Brighter Days Ahead. I think the slight lack of fitness landed flat footed at the last, just got caught out. Um, I, I would not have Brighter Days Ahead to beat State Man at Cheltenham. No way, Joel. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I totally agree. Um, and you know, I'll get on to Constitution Hill, but is that not stand out now? Would you, would you prefer State Man to win that and end up? You know, two to one favorite or whatever, <laughs> fifteen to eight or something like that. Or would you go with Frankie's thoughts, which is my thoughts exactly? Of you know, you, you switch that around. Constitution Hill might not even ever see a race course again, and you're getting seven to two today to sit on. Um, and people did that last year, didn't they? A lot of people did that just on the hope that Constitution Hill wasn't turning up. And he's it'll, it'll be you know, but I mean, just yeah. This is the time of the year now when we always say anti post. I think post racing is dead. Um, however, I, I'm coming up with Tilia with, with State Man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. State Man. Um, can, you make, can, you make, can you make it three? Brighter days ahead. Is she a shoe in for the mares now, Joel? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it, it was it was a very obvious obvious thing. I don't think you need to ask, ask trainers. You know, it, it was obvious. Now a lot of people are saying that the why does the mares hurdle even exist? Why does it even exist? Um, it, you know, weakens the champion hurdle. Um, but th there is that thing in your head where you go, I want a Cheltenham winner. It doesn't matter if it's the second spoon race, you know, if it's the pony race or the mascot race, you've got a, you've got a winner at Cheltenham. Now, bright days ahead, Mayor's Hurdle. I think that's at this point today is is we're looking at that material from what we've seen. 
Frankie? Yeah, uh, Gordon usually hedges on the the opinion of let's get Cheltenham winners. Um, so if he thinks there's a win winnable race at Cheltenham, he'd go there. And uh, Lossy Mouth is probably more likely to go to the ch champion now that State Man has uh, been beat. So I think all roads lead to the mayors for brighter days ahead. I think if anyone's got a really strong opinion on the fighting fifth, we'll, we'll probably speak about that as well. Or we, maybe we'll come on to that. But your champion hurdle could, winner could be in there. Mystical Power and Sajino both could win a champion hurdle, I think. So if you were really keen on one before this weekend, it's probably worth a little anti-post each way before one of them wins. Which brings me nicely on to that uh, little bit of a conundrum then, because obviously the news of a Constitution Hill, we hear this morning that he is miles better and they are cautiously optimistic if he goes to Kempton, which brings Sir Gino then back over hurdles, despite them saying he's going to go over fences. He's coming back over hurdles for Nick Henderson, but they do have state man, the same owners, in the champion hurdles. So are they going to run both? Or does Sir Gino take him to this? Constitution Hill, well, we never know if we're going to see him again after he is fit. And then does Sajina go over fences? I mean, it is a conundrum. It's a bit of a mess. It's a soap opera again being played out in public from Seven Barrows. And I just, you know, why is there such, I said this last week, and I'm going to say it every week, why is there a big drama over the runners from Seven Barrows? Everyone goes about the business quietly, but everything is just played out. And it's just so dramatised. Constitution Hill, he's injured. Oh, no, he's not, not, not so injured. He's out the fighting fifth. He's definitely out the Christmas hurdle. Oh, no, we know he might make the Christmas hurdle. We've got to put Sir Gino in the fighting fifth, even though he's going to go the fences. It's just a mess. And it doesn't help punters, does it, Frankie? It doesn't help punters. Uh, as you're talking, just imagine this plays out, though. Uh, I mean, it doesn't help us for any anti-post shows. But Sir Gino goes over hurdles and wins well. I think it would be unlike Nicky Henderson to start him over hurdles and then switch over to fences, especially given his age. He actually he did it have his novice season over fences then he can go chasing when bally burns not chasing so let's say sagino now is going to go over hurdles let's say that lossy mouth state man they're obviously going to go against each other i think the donnelly's have said they don't care if sagino and state man are both in the champion hurdle and then constitution hill gets fit we could have lossy mouth state man sagino and constitution hill all race against each other in the champion hurdle, which will be an unbelievable race. I think that's more likely to play out than most scenarios. Um, it, it's, it is drama, it is annoying. I've given up having an opinion on Constitution Hill. If he's fit, great. If he's not, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm not going to try and guess anymore and, and, and back him when I think he might make a return until, until he's racing. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, he's not in the conversation for me anymore. But I do think Sergino does have a, have a big chance. And I feel like if he goes hurdling, he stays hurdling. For this season, not forever. The chances of Constitution and Sergino getting to the champion hurdle fit, Joel, without any <laughs> hoo-ha. <laughs> well, I, well, I know, I know it's, um, it's probably rattled you. I've never seen you like this before. And, and, and let's the work email down. I just, you just think from, from the sprint of Sacre days, then we're with Altio, we've had it with John Bonu in the ground. Then with the Jericho de Repine thing the other week, even, you know, just that. And then you just, as, do you know, were you surprised? Were you surprised about what happened in Constitution Hill in that gallop last week? Were you surprised? Were you surprised when he came out and said he's lame? No. No, 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 no not no, at all. Oh, oh my God. And that says a lot, doesn't it? That says a lot. It's like, oh, here we go again. Because it just it, it is it is dramatic. And if it was any other stable, you'd be like, oh, I can't believe it. We're going to miss him this weekend. It's, it's like you're waiting. It's like you're hovering over X, waiting, waiting for the news. And then it breaks. What? There's two, th two things on this. Um, the first will be, it doesn't really sit right with me when you see the price drift, first of all. Now, it's fine. We can all see the uh, newbie gallop. We've to see that and make your own mind up and go, just quite frankly, Constitution Hill, blown out of his arse. So it drifts out of 41. 20s are available on the machine for very small money, right? We see that. But it's when, a couple of hours before, and it happens time and time again, and I know the stable sponsored by a bookmaker, but you see something drift out, and then you get <clears throat> good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You know, um, uh, you know. Um, um, so some news about Constitution Hill. He won't be running, and you go. I suppose you know, that's going to happen, though, isn't it? Because the stable lads and everyone's got rumours yeah, going to happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's not that going to happen sometimes. But I, th I think it's what you're being told beforehand. You know, I'm not a racehorse trainer. I've never ridden a racehorse. But at the same time, I, I, I'm looking at that, going, 
well, they, <laughs> they're going to be ready in two weeks' time, you know, and I think everybody else is, but apparently Nico... And then that's the point, him. because you read it afterwards, he said he's 100%, we're happy with him, he's blown up for fitness, and we're going to yeah. see him again on Sunday. And then it was a, a mysterious lameness. That, that's the thing that... But it's also, I mean, it's never, it's, it's never something... Like in Scope Badly, you know, we can all anyone can use that one, Scope Badly or whatever. Um, it it was this this bruising on whatever it was that the, the vet had never seen in 40 years. And you know, you remember seeing and you're going, What? So it's a bruise touching a nerve, and and you go, sometimes is it not just easier to go? He's not eating up, he's 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 fine, but he's not eating up, you know, as opposed to so what happened was he had a there's a nerve here, there's a bruise there, and he's touching this and whatever. Now, Friday on the punter's guide, before any of this happened. And normally I can't hold in my own weight. On Friday, I said a back summer, top price 25 to 1. I've had 20 pounds on it. The champion hurdle. You find out Monday. What was that? Mystical power. So Gino. Oh. And, and this is not me looking, you know, not predicting things or looking or or or, or having info or anything like that. I think it's about like nine, nine or something now. But it was a case of, um, you know, another season where Constitution Hill is, is not going to run. Um, whatever happens to State, man. And, I'm, I, and I was genuinely thinking if the, if the cash out button's flashing up at some point, I'll take some free cash from there just for, you know, your 20 quid. Um, last year, how many people back State, man, at 7 to 2, 4 to 1, just hoping that Constitution Hill wouldn't turn up? It's bad reality TV. Like I say, how many horses go missing? And we, we haven't, we, you know, we, we haven't seen them. We, we, we're looking for them, and you never hear anything from them. He's only, it's only because he's high profile, I think. And, and I'll be frankly on this one. I think everybody's spending so much time, as we are now, talking about the horse, but it takes the fun out of the champion hurdle for me. Um, and they'll be betting without markets and, and, and whatever you fancy. But you know, <laughs> will he go? Will he not go? I'm just, I'm just a bit like. <laughs> We want to see the best horse in the best races, but we never feel like we are going to get it. That is that is that is my problem. Anyway, put that to one side. Let's move on and get caught up over this. And no doubt we'll revisit it on uh, Friday. The punters go looking ahead to the fighting fifth. But we know if Frank and uh, Joel will be back in, in that now. Uh, what about the race that Gordon Elliott and Guinness Town were always going to win because they had all three runners? Um, uh, sell a story in search for glory. I mean, there was only a little distance between them after three miles, but at least two that, I know Frank, you said about Dancing City and Majbra with the Stain Novice Chase Division, are these two that you're looking at for the Brown Advisor, or even the National Hunt Chase, because they are just out and out gallopers, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, and Stella Story was last year's Bartlow winner, so deserves his name in the hat. Um, and, uh, God, what's it? Search for Glory had had a run over fences already, had a bit of a fitness edge, a bit of experience. Um, and he still managed to get the better of him. I know he had better form last season over hurdles coming into it, but it was hard. It's, it's hard to watch that race with three uh, Jiggins Dance horses and, and have a real strong opinion, isn't it? Because they went pretty slowly and, you know, the race happened as, as it did. I'm glad for um, X's uproar's sake that they at least finished in price order oh, um, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. otherwise otherwise it would have would have been uh some frustrated punters but yeah it, it, this this race prompted me to look at the three mile chase division I, you know i've been pretty keen on match but but we haven't yet seen him um a horse that i am quite excited in this division about is better days ahead the pipe winner who's already beaten Slade Steel over fences and and when he won at Cheltenham he was really tough to do that so um when looking at the odds for the Brown advisory I, I do quite like him at 16s at this stage he might be another one where that two and a half might have been taken away as going to made to mm. make a decision as well but he's more likely to go up in trip than yeah. he is down in trip there's a little bit of concern I mean we talk about Bill size over here but staying chases you know in Ireland and what we come to expect to only get three for a big novice chase a grade two oh. like that Joel um, I don't, I'll be honest with you, I don't really have an opinion. I mean, I, I, I was I was listening to what Frankie was saying originally yeah, about <laughs> yeah, 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 no, 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 the three three game sound horses. Um, if they'd not have finished in that particular order, how do you get how do you get away with that? You know, I, I, <laughs> as a, I remember there was one flat race here maybe 20 years ago, and the, the owner had six of the eight, and they were all called it's stone stone crabs or whatever they're called, or so whatever they're called, they were all called the same thing with, with different. Yeah, I can't know what it was. And there was only one of them backed in the entire 
you know, the, the entire field, 16s into threes or something like that. And of course, that one, how do you, you know, how do you get away with that? Again, you know, it's racing shooting themselves in the foot and just, just looking at it going, if you think horse racing's bent, you know, if 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 that outside of three have been backed into into favoritism and you're all, all, all scratching your chins. Um, but you know, turned out all right, I backed the winner. <laughs> so I still got involved. Um but but but, but no, um no, sorry, what is your question? So about Ireland. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, right, let's look at the um the mayor's novice hurdle because I was really taken probably the performance of the week is certainly stylish, was that's nice at Warwick, uh, Nick and Boyneville. Never really moved in, uh, on Nicky Anderson's That's Nice. A homebred from JP McManus. She's 12 to 1 for the Mayor's Novice. She went on the outside, then just switched to the inside. He could have stuck her anywhere. Honky Tonk Highway was useful. She won the big listed bumper at Sandown before being well being at Angel, but she's useful. And this thing cantered all over her. Um, really took the eye, Joel. I know, really took the eye for me as well. Um, I, I, I've written down here for a star rate. I've you know, got four stars here. Uh, Honky Tonk Highway. Just looked green, uh, hung right, wandered around a little bit. Um, like, like you say, Nick, I don't know if he was looking for better ground or he was just, he could have he gone, he could have gone the outside all the way around, the inside all the way around. It didn't matter. It looked really, really, really nice. It was well backed as well. Um, so JP's really had a nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. JP's had a really, really decent um, weekend. And I'm sure he was saying afterwards, that's nice. He had some decent winners at the weekend, some nice touches as well, including. I can't, Alan. But um, yeah, we know what Honky Tonk Highway is from the limited amount of times um, we've seen the horse. But um, no, really, really impressed this weekend. Did you see Frankie? What did you make of it? That's nice. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, one to follow for the season for sure. Couldn't have a strong opinion on whether she's going to win anything at Cheltenham yet. We haven't seen uh, four of the top five in the market for the Mayor's Novice since last season. But yeah, no, it was, it was really impressive performance. She's, she's certainly an exciting one for the season um picking out other horses from the same division i'm quite excited for diva luna to make her hurling debut whenever she does she obviously won an entry that had a few decent bumper horses in behind but impressed with that's nice and mark uh money beforehand suggests they're expecting it and a confident ride to match so it's good have you got the uh, child market mark up there matt have you got the child market up is, is, is it maureen is it she maureen's favorite uh, yeah yeah at what price is let it rain for the skeletons because um harry's been 20s 20 he's but he's been going around um putting this one up and the, the old question about okay what well, we've not seen and whatever what you're looking forward to uh, and let it rain i was watching them back this morning with the uh eighth and win on debut um where was that that's uh warwick i think it was um then over three lengths win at ascot and second of friendships that um friendship that one of uh hobbs at, at chepstone so it adds up so 20 to 1 is a big price if that horse wasn't british again we do this every year we'll probably be eights or tens max but let it rain um and of course um ari's got so many horses to ride that you know he, he's brought that one up every single time so let it rain in there at 20 to 1 so looking for, forward to that okay they've got some really nice young mares as well I have the skeletons. So let's move on to a look at the Supreme Novice, an outsider, but I know a horse that you'll like and know well with the Sam Thomas connection, Joel. Uh, Celtic Dino on being over hurdles, another uh, good win from the front and beating a decent field doing it the hard way, but all races so far have been on right-handed tracks. Was that by design? Um, a few people have said this. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought so, to be honest. And just going back to that Let It Rain, um, the, the three length win at Ascot was behind, is it Breaching Castle, Breaking Castle? And Celtic, um, yeah, Celtic Dino back in third. Um, so that just makes me a little bit more excited here. Um, I like the way you mentioned that. I, I don't think it's by design. Um, I think Sam Thomas, we're back to Saturday Sam, you know, being the, the great trainer that he is, former top jock. Uh, I don't think it's by design whatsoever. Uh, it's not a, you know, you two, uh, we've not started yet on the Gaelic Warrior. Um, <laughs> P oh, taking, yeah, yeah, but um, but no, look, look, really good, look, really good to me, really, really good this weekend. I don't think it's by design whatsoever. And then I'll ask Frankie about Lucky Place. Um, obviously you you, you tip this one up and he got the better of Blue King Daru and and uh, Golden Ace. But is there a race for him at Cheltenham? Uh, I know he's fourth for Langer Dan, so you know, his form's getting stronger and stronger. If he was to go in Grady Company, would it be the ancient hurdle he'd probably see? <laughs> what did you say, Joe? Entry, entry hurdle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, 
He's in that awkward kind of grade two division, isn't he? Not sure. Or if he does have a grade one on his hands, it's probably not a Cheltenham Festival grade one. It's an entry grade one where maybe not all the best horses turn up. But yeah, and the, the track will suit, the trip will suit him. And if you looked at last year's entry hurdle, um, Imperial Pass, Bob Ollinger, Langadan, I'd have him in the mix with them. I, I, I wouldn't say he couldn't win that race. So yeah, I'd say that's probably would be a good end of season target for him. And it'd be smarter to miss Cheltenham grade ones because I don't think he's quite good enough. I mean, okay. we both... Now we, we both well, put up lucky place at the, the weekend, uh, nine to one into nine to two or whatever it was. Great ride. It, it, was, it was a really good ride. And, and Nico you know, look, looked like he knew what he's got. I think Ian Bartlett was commentating at the weekend. Uh, he wasn't doing his weird French harness racing, which was a better change. So he was he, he was he was commentating. And I think it was two hours out. Like, any, any one the four could win. And I'm like, if, if Colonel Mustard wins this. And it's the only time. <laughs> I know, only time. Colonel Mustard looks like this. But um, yeah, lucky, lucky place. Um, re really enjoyed that. And and you, and you know, we said beforehand, you know, you look at that last race and you look at the weights. It was it was a really obvious, a really obvious thing, and not a lot of things are obvious and work out. So I was I was really pleased. Did oh, did you not get a little bit excited, Matt? Golden Ace was was travelling, turning home. Oh, I mean, well, it was everything. Yeah, she was. She was tanking, and she went on the outside, and then he switched onto the inside of Colonel Mosson, and I thought we were just going to go through and win, but didn't pick up. Yeah. Um maybe maybe it's the fitness. So I'm not sure. See, we'll certainly come on for it. But the way she travelled, you can't lose faith there. I mean, it was the big tricks. Erico just done by Trelawne of all horses by half a length, and then Golden Ace just not picking up despite travelling like the wrath of God. Um <laughs> Martator, Martator um came 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 to the rescue. Yeah, so Venetia saved yeah, us. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> Well, I, 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 I back Marcel. You made that much of a good case, man. You did. You, 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 you said as well, and, I, and I, we, we tried to put you off, and you said, "Look, you know, oh, it's, it's, it's value for a further ten. And I'm like, you know, and then Ned Fox had taken up a five, and I'm saying, "Well, Charlie's at Haydock, and you're telling me about it, and of course, that's how you put people onto a horse." So uh, we we followed you in the little followers, and um, it was a great ride, great success, and looked right. like there's a lot more. Fun. There is, and I want this is where I want you to indulge me now because he won by 11 lengths, beating the right horse in second, third, never came off the bridle. So confident was Ned Fox, he went all the way around the outside, giving up lengths. The way he jumped and the way he traveled, right? I know this is a handicap off 140, and an Ergerman and John Bonner 169, 175, so he's miles behind them, but he's probably going to go up 10. He's clearly not done improving. The way he travelled at Ascot, could you see him going back there for the Clarence House? And I'm thinking, remember Fun and Bjorn Savola, the Venetia Williams, he went through the handicap rankings, then ended up winning the game spirit at, New at Newbury. I thought he should have another one on this hand around. He's only seven. He's had a lot of races. But the way he's won those two races at Ascot, I'd love to see him at a decent price in the Clarence House, really serve it up to them guys. Mm. Uh, look, the sky's really the limit. That makes sense. Ned Fox's really words. Sense. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Did you? I, I was watching it and I said to my mate uh, halfway around because Ned Fox was riding, like you say, riding on the outside. And I said something on the lines of, he's got, he's got this wrong. <laughs> I was like, Ned Fox, I'm like, I'm like he's, he's, he's right, balls this up. Um, but no, it was. Um, no, I was I confident, know. right, wasn't it? It was, it was the last leg of a trixie for me. Um, yeah, and nice. I thought, I, I was happy, I was happy all the way around. That's the he thing. Too quick into the last last fence, man. <laughs> no, he did, but I think that's the ultimate comfort. I mean, those four coming down out of Swinney Bottom and then across, and they say he was on the outside, but yeah, you know, the, the camera angle wasn't great from the inside. But everything was making me. Also, were making mistakes. I'm not jumping as well. He pinged everyone, every single yeah. one. He saw a stride, even the tricky downhill fences. He never yeah. put a foot wrong. He travelled like the rat had gone. And he yeah. just quickened away from, you know, uh, it's only handicappers, I know that. It, it may have been a weaker renewal than it was th three weeks ago, but he's beaten Cop Mask and Fred Arm by a lot further off a higher mark, off, off, off worse of the weights. And I just think he's rapidly improving that five on the spin now. And I don't say he's not going to win a champion chase, but I'd love to see him in the Clarence House. And I could see him running into a place. Fun and Bill Savola was second in a champion chase at 40s. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the one thing that blunted my um, enthusiasm a touch was just going back and having a look at the differences in weights um, between the Holden Gold Cup, um, Jello oh, and... Sandsborough. Uh, yeah, and Sandsborough. And, and they, they were giving um, Martador 
eight, ten pounds, whereas whereas he was kind of getting about that in this. So that, that blunt my enthusiasm a tiny bit, but he was super impressive. And he certainly, you know, well, that, yeah, Ned, Ned Fox's words to me after work, the sky is the limit. Who knows? Um, mm, he's so exciting. Love him. And just just another word on, on, on Venetia's horses over over the weekend. Gemma Rand, um, she mm. said to me uh, after I, I said, Betty, oh, that was good. And she said, that's why I told Charlie we, we wanted him in the Paddy Power at Cheltenham. Obviously, that didn't work out for them. But um, they obviously think he's probably got a fair bit left in him as well. Maybe the December version then. Potentially, yeah. Potentially. Right. Okay. You know, you know you've got all these contacts. Like, oh, got I was I was asked. Well, you know, what I mean? you, you pass some of this on as opposed to the the after time. Well, it's post, yeah. it's post race, not pre race. There's no good to you after the race. Yeah. Uh, can um can I ask about? You know, we always say you're doing any other business, and myself and Frankie, you've written O was it A O B down there, and we're thinking we've got Aidan O'Brien on every week. The um Iker Alan yesterday was entered again today Monday at Kempton. Um, obviously was taken out. Uh, the application of money after the 19 losses and shown nothing, uh, cruised home on Sunday. Um, was that just because he's been dropped 30 pounds? Or I thought I thought this was going to be a Cheltenham, you know, like a, or, or a big festival win. Oh, I don't remember last year for the attempts, I really fancied him, didn't I? And I kept yeah. banging the drum. Like he just qualified at Aintree and he just looked like an absolute plot and he chucked it in there and he's chucked it in every race since. But no idea. I didn't get, I, didn't, I say I don't, I didn't know what, what's been going on at home, whether he's just literally sparked up and all of a sudden come to life, maybe. I really don't know. I really don't know. But obviously, he's a huge touch. So uh, he's obviously not run on the Monday. But maybe if he is back, he was very well handicapped. Maybe he could run up a bit of a sequence if he's back to something like his best. And Willie Mullins doesn't look like he's coming over to defend his title. However, um, this 500 grand prize for top jockey, which nobody in the world cares about, apart from Harry Skelton, Nico de Boyville, Harry Cobden, <laughs> the, the, you know, the, the top, top jocks. Nobody else is, is caring, apart from the jobber jocks who might get, you know, what is it, 10 grand if they finish 10th. Would, would you not, if you were like Patrick Mullins, be having a word with the old man saying, can you, you know, on a Saturday, you know, ITV racing, bring a couple over, I'll ride them, you know, Half a million quid in his back pocket. Would would you, would would that? Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? It's a lot of money. It'd be, hard, it'd be hard to do. There's too many of them. When when they first pr uh, proposed the idea, I thought it was going to be a very select few races. But it's every, every ITV race from now till entry. It's a lot of racing to come over. So I, I asked the question right. So in the winter, you come January time, end of December, whatever, and there's no there's no flat racing, and we get you know eight races at Wolverhampton or something. And Ross Orion's got eight, you know, favourites. Could he potentially win this money then? No, it's George. Three weeks, <laughs> three weeks in a row, you have to see a Imagine. <laughs> no, it's the jumps. It's, 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 it's the jumps. Jockey's cup. But I like your thinking. Yeah. No, no, George, no, George, George rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, yeah. I, I, just, I thought that would be hilarious. You know, something like Dougie Costello. Are they riding the bumpers? Are they riding any televised bumpers? Yeah, and, and so, so if we change, for example, is this not going to be so? Kelso is saying that the C track and the A track is 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 um is rained off or snowed off. Does that mean that your Cobb, Denny Skelton, Nico, whoever, go up and then nick all the rides from the other lads? Yeah, last I'd imagine, sir, so. for half a million, half a million quid, you would be, wouldn't you? Yeah, rather win that than the title. <laughs> yeah, about the kicking. Yeah, to be fair, what'd you get for the title? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right this weekend boys fighting fifth hennessy weekend as well obviously join us friday we'll have our thoughts on that although it looks like jaws will be tipping up sir gino between now and march for every year to race um so yeah guess thoughts for that looking forward to the weekend uh, anything else from the weekend that caught your eye that you wanted to mention no um no. one that city <laughs> <laughs> one that caught my eye for not running that might go to Newbury this weekend is Lemilos, who obviously won a Hennessy but could go in one of these handicap chases. I think he's got an entry for the two and a half miler on Friday. Um, been saying he's well handicapped, he obviously didn't run because the ground he's he's in the mixer. Um, and Colwell Potter potentially we're going to see out on Friday. I don't know if that's been confirmed, yeah, but he's entered in the um two and a half mile novices. 
they are two two early shouts for you. And we mentioned the fight, obviously fighting fifth to Gino, all of that. But um, Steel Alley, uh, uh, along each way twenties poke wouldn't be the worst shout. Sam Thomas forms in uh, horses are in good form. I'm not saying he's going to win it, but you might get some place money, and that's that's better than deciding between two eleven to eight shots that could beat each other. Yeah, interesting. And there's, also, uh, there's, your, there's, your, there's, your, there's your three early shout. What's that? The one that at the weekend. Sorry, yeah. uh, who did Steel Alley get beaten by? He didn't. He won on Sunday. Well, he went up yeah. with Josh the box, didn't he? No, 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 no. Who did he, no, no. Who did he get beaten by? Who did he get beaten by? Connection's gone terrible. Can't hear you. <laughs> it's not. I just been all stunned. We're all stunned into silence. Well, the horse the Steel Alley got beaten by is uh, Lump Sum. Ah, that's last time out. Yeah, you're right. Lump oh, Sum right. Which, yeah. yeah, Lump Sum is in the fighting fifth, as is as is Namian Lion. <laughs> right, it's all, it's no, all got a little bit. Sum, is it, got is it, is way, fighting fifth shout. <laughs> it's all falling apart. So the there question you go. Is to say, yes, but look, still Ally won at the weekend, but who beat him? <laughs> no, yeah, who I'm beat him? him? He won. Josh yeah. the boss was there. And yeah. still no, I'm, 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 no, no, sorry. I've actually forgotten who beat him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he won. No, last time, I mean. Last time. Oh, oh yeah. So, uh, lump sum, 20s, each way shot for the fighting fifth. If you are watching this, it's hard to believe we don't rehearse. <laughs> right, Friday, put this guy heads on it. We'll be more professional. Uh, I promise you. And hopefully, we can have uh, as equally as a good weekend as we had uh, the weekend just gone. Right, join us Friday. Looking ahead to Newcastle and Newbury. See you soon.